I am more than happy with that. Three shot groups at 30 yards. 177 RWS Superdomes. Hi guys, this is Rack and Load. And what has caused this? The new Brocock Compatto. And oh my god, guys, this thing is superb. Absolutely superb. I've got this thing on loan for a couple of weeks and oh, I really don't want to give it back. It really is a great, great little rifle. Now, some say it's a bullpup, uh, semi bullpup, carbine, whatever you want to call it. I think the word that is sticking, or the phrase that is sticking at the moment, is semi bullpup. Um, kind of like a short configuration, you know, everything's a little bit further back than on a conventional rifle. Um, that is a good thing, you know, it makes the thing pretty sort of, well it's well balanced anyway, but it brings a bit of the weight sort of back, so it's ideal for hunting, you know, it's sort of not front heavy or anything, um, but oh, I just love it, I love it. Right then, so let's jump in with a rack and load review. First of all, I'll uh, give you all the specs, I'll read it off uh, Brocock's um, brochure anyway. So, uh, right then, weight wise, uh, 2.7 kilos unscoped or 5.9 pounds, full length of 864 millimeters or 34 inches, available in 177, 22, and 0.25 caliber. This one is the UK version, so it is at 12 foot pounds. 10 shot rotary magazine. Um, now, as you guys probably know Brocock is now sort of owned by Daystate. Daystate are, are running it and you know they've got all their design boffins and everything sort of running the show with Brocock and that is a good thing because all of Daystate's um, how can I word it uh, good stuff good designs or whatever it's sort of it's sort of seeped into this rifle so to speak kind of like the magazines um, yeah, these probably look familiar if you own Day States. Um, great magazines, self-indexing, uh, metal magazines, uh, and obviously there's a bit of plastic on them as well. But these are really, really nice magazines. Dead easy to load. Even you know the small 177 ones, really nice. You know, getting the 177 pellets in there, nice and easy. I actually loaded uh, this magazine up wearing gloves as well. So, not too fiddly at all. Obviously, it'd be better with a 22 or a 25 caliber rifle um, loading one of those magazines. But dead simple to load the magazine. Just drop your pellet in and then just click it round, drop another one in until you're fully loaded. And then it's just a case of dropping the magazine into the rifle and uh, cocking it. I'll show you how to load it in a minute. Well, let's talk about uh, this rifle. First of all, before I give you like a detailed rack and load review, I'll just tell you what it's wearing. It has got um, an MTC 3 to 9 times uh, 40 scope on it. That is a real nice scope. Uh, they're Butler Creek uh, scope covers, by the way, just in case you want to know. But this is a real nice scope uh, that was on this rifle anyway when I've, uh, when I've borrowed it, and it really does suit this rifle. Um, and this thing oh, is just super accurate, like I was showing you at the beginning of the video. Oh, pellet stacker, I've got another target here. Uh, these are uh, five shot groups. Uh, you can't really tell as good because there's some paper rather than card. But at 30 yards, super accurate. I was also shooting a steel gong as well with this thing at, I think we got that out to about 65, 70 yards. Um, and it was hitting that, no problem at all. Um, so it's got the range there as well, if you should need it. But what a great rifle, great rifle. It has got a little thing that I'm not over keen on. If you watch my videos, you'll probably know. Should I even mention it? 
you know what I'm like guys with uh, gauges at the front of a rifle where you've got to look down the muzzle to see how much air's in it. Yeah, that's my only gripe, but we won't even go there. It would have been nicer if they'd just put the gauge under there. I do hate that. I, in all rifles, doesn't matter how good they are, I hate gauges at the front. I uh, love it when uh, you see a gauge on the side or underneath the forend. Just easier to look at and you're not looking down the dangerous end, you know, just to sort of uh, keep an eye on your air. But anyway, we won't even go there. I won't moan about that too much. So, let's go into this in some detail then. So, first of all, the stock. Let's take it from the butt end. But before we do, this is what everyone are calling a semi bullpup. So it's neither a bullpup or a rifle. So it's a semi bullpup or bullpup carbine semi, whatever you want to call it. No, semi bullpup. So I was trying to come up with my own one there, but it just didn't work. Semi bullpup. We'll stick with that because that seems to be the one that's stuck anyway. Um, but real nice design, ambidextrous, and as you can know, as you guys know, I'm a lefty, so that is an absolute win in my book. I just love ambidextrous stocks, and it is fully synthetic. This stock is obviously in the, in the uh, black polymer, and it feels really, really solid. Nothing hollow here. It just feels real tough and solid. Uh, I think it would take some serious punishment to uh, this stock wood. Obviously it's going to be weatherproof, you know, and it's going to withstand the elements. But, oh, really comfortable as well. The pistol grip, uh, nice and slender, plenty of room there as well, you know, if you're wearing gloves. Um, quite thin the pistol grip is, you, that might surprise you when you first handle one of these, you'll think, blimey, that's pretty slender, you know, but it just feels right, this rifle does, it really does. The recoil pad or butt pad is um, nice sort of solid rubber, not too soft and not too sort of grabby either that you know will sort of pull on your jacket or anything. Uh, just right really. It is adjustable as well. There is a, an Allen bolt there, so you can adjust your uh, sort of rise and fall of the um, of the recoil pad so you get the gun to fit you just nice. And. Like I was saying, nice slender pistol grip and you've got a little bit of sort of stippling there going on to give you a bit of traction. And then moving along the fore end, again you've got a little bit of stippling here and then you've got a Picatinny rail all moulded into the polymer which is a good feature, makes this thing kind of tactical. Um, but you can fit yourself a bipod on there if you want uh, or get yourself like a, a torch mounted on there, laser, whatever you want um, but that's a good feature uh, I went with a bipod um, just sort of uh, plonk one on there to assist in my shooting well to be honest put one on there just to uh, save taking a, a little rest with me onto the range But nice, nice stock. I really do love this. It'll be interesting to see whether they bring out a camouflage version of this. I think that would look really, really cool. So, uh, Day State Stroke Brokart, if you're watching, a uh, camouflage version of this would look awesome. It really would. Like a real tree camo, possibly. That would look awesome. Whether they'll bring these out in like a laminate, mm, don't know. Might be difficult to make, I don't know, would it? Possibly not, don't know. Special editions maybe, limited editions in uh, in laminate, different coloured laminate, laminates. Definitely need some camo ones, definitely though. Because I think this thing will be really popular with hunters. So anyway, that's the stock. 
Now there's a full length 18 inch barrel or 457 millimeters in length the barrel is uh, shrouded as well and on this one is a hug it silencer that thing is really effective by the way <laughs> love that thing uh, these aren't as standard by the way when you uh, purchase one of these compatos uh, but that is a good optional extra or extra add-on to get but the barrel uh, obviously totally free floating there and that is real true free floating as in there's no clamp or clip or anything interfering with it you know around this sort of section uh, I don't get that a lot of uh, rifles that you see that claim to have free floating rifle free floating barrels all have like a, a clip here so to me that kind of uh, takes away the free floating but that's me that's just my little moan and then we've got the gauge yeah I'm not going to say anything about the gauge and its location but it's nice and clear anyway yeah that's enough said about that and then we've got the filler area here which is covered oh, I'm just off camera there sorry which is covered with this uh, dust cover here which just sort of rotates out of the way nice design nothing to unscrew and get lost love that really good idea loading the rifle is nice and easy as well first of all pull this bolt handle up pull it back uh, while we're talking about the bolt handle that is stainless steel by the way and it feels really nice and solid uh, really quite grippy as well and easy to use even when wearing gloves uh, I've tried it <laughs> so uh, no problems there um, but obviously load your magazine up with uh, a full load of pellets uh, 177 this is so this is a 10 shot mag uh, and it's literally just uh, pop the magazine in what holds the magazine in is this little ball bearing there if you can see it my camera will focus that ball bearing there literally just engages try and get it right up to the camera don't know whether you can see this little notch here pop it in like so and it just clicks in really really good design so it's self engaging uh, self indexing rather uh, and then it's literally just push the bolt forward and down and that's it you're hot you're good to go there's no automatic safety catch on this it is a manual safety catch which you can put on and off whenever you like so that is an absolute win again in my book because oh, all right I do like automatic safety catches I don't necessarily like them on multi-shot rifles especially if you you know when you need a fast follow-up shot uh, it's just a bit of a pain to have to click a, a safety catch again especially if you're hunting you know some of these uh, safety catches can be a, a bit noisy you know you don't want to give your position away to your quarry or anything but uh, while we're talking about the safety catch it is actually here and I do like it it's a paddle design so you just push it across like so it is a little bit noisy hunters you'll agree I'm sure but I do like the design there really do like that but like I said load your magazine in cock the, uh, the bolt put push the bolt forward so it engages uh, your first pellet into the uh, into the chamber of this rifle and you are hot you are good to go three different power settings as well on this rifle um, that is a good feature especially if you're sort of uh, in a barn or something or you're just plinking having some practice you know you can turn the power down and you'll get more shots obviously out of your 150 cc reservoir so full power uh, 12 foot pounds uh, this rifle is uh, in 177 you're going to get around 90 shots so that is more than enough uh, you know if you're going out hunting 
So 90 shots will definitely see you right for sure. And then obviously once you've taken your first shot, it's literally just cock it all the way back and you're good to go again. I'll just fire this in a safe direction. That's how easy it is. Really, really nice and smooth to operate, the Compato is. Now the trigger is two stage and it is adjustable and this thing is just absolutely glorious. It really is a nice trigger. Uh, I'll give it a pull for you guys. Uh, I've not messed about with it. This rifle's literally straight from the factory, from, uh, from Day State. Uh, I'll give it a pull, see what it's doing. Okay, let's just cock it and we'll give this trigger a pull. One pound, 11 ounces. That is a really, really nice trigger. Let's give it another go, just for argument's sake. See how accurate my scale is. These usually are pretty accurate. Yeah, one pound, 10 ounces there. So that is a real nice trigger. Obviously you can adjust it if you want it a little bit heavier if you're out in the field, then it's easy enough to do so. Plenty of room there as well if you do want to make any adjustments to the uh, trigger. Uh, the trigger guard, by the way, is a polymer. So that keeps the weight down, keeps everything nice and light, and it is pretty tough too. Uh, but uh, I just love that safety catch design. I'm a big cross bolt safety, uh, safety catch fan, but I really do like that. That's nice, nice and accessible. Really like it. Now you'll notice as well that there's a dovetail rail here and there's obviously one underneath here, but because this is a semi bullpup configuration, they've had to put this scope block and mount it on top of that dove rail to bring your scope forward so obviously you can get the correct eye relief because of the semi bullpup design. Just in case you were wondering, that's pretty much what that is for. Obviously if you mounted the scope um, on the action where you conventionally would, I guess, on uh, you know that sort of action, then the scope's going to be way, way back here and you'll need to have your head well, pretty much off the stock. So that is why that block is on there, it's to move everything forward because the action has been moved back. Semi ballpup design. But it works, it's really comfortable. I'm a lefty, I had no problems at all using this rifle. No problems at all getting good eye relief. Uh, it was just, it's just so comfortable to use. And if you've seen uh, my um, Day State factory tour, uh, Kid in a Candy Shop video, uh, check that out. That's when I first hold one of these rifles and just to bring it up to your cheek, you know, to get a, um, you know, a, a good sort of uh, bead through the, uh, the scope, it literally comes straight up to your cheek. Uh, it's really quite, uh, quite instantaneous the way you can shoulder this rifle. It kind of reminds me of uh, my Ruger 1022 uh, 22 rimfire, um, it's a bit of a race rifle that I've built, but that thing just comes up to up to your, like your sight picture instantly, so to speak. Uh, this thing, oh, it just, it's there. Bring it up to your cheek and it's there. It, everything is just in the right place. It just feels good. So that's it then guys. That is your Rack and Low review of the Brocock Compato. What a, a great, great little rifle. Semi ball pop. Really is a cool, cool rifle. I am a big, big fan. And I really do not want to give this thing back. Definitely, definitely, if you're listening, Day State, Stroke, Brocock, do a camo stock for this. Do it in real tree. Something like that. Hot cakes, that's all I'm gonna say. Because the hunters are gonna love this thing. 
They really are. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's Rack and Load. Thanks for watching. See ya.